Hi, I'm Annie. Today I want to talk about FE. I've always felt a little bit allergic to FE, so let's talk about that. If you would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one video chat session with me, you can find a link in the description. So a few months ago, I had this thought, I feel traumatized by FE. And then I immediately thought, that's a bit heavy-handed. I mean, traumatized? <laughs> that's a bit much. And so I've been just kind of sitting on it for a while. I came to the conclusion that yes, I feel a bit traumatized by FE. That is the correct word. And it's come up recently as recently as today. I really wouldn't use the word traumatized anymore. I've sort of figured it out. But when I was younger, yeah, I would say traumatized. And that's just me. I take full responsibility for that. And I remember these feelings from as early as four or five years old. When people around me were using a lot of amped up, all in, F-E, it just sort of landed wrong with me when people are coming at me with a lot of F-E. It's just not the best way to communicate with me. However, I'm a double decider, so I do appreciate that it may be the most effective and comfortable way for the person with F-E communicating to use that. I get that. So when I was little, you know, some adult maybe coming at me with the F-E, maybe they're not even lead F-E, they're just using that because maybe they think that that is how you should talk to children. Just like, hey, pretty girl, how's it going? Isn't it a beautiful day? And I was only four, but I was like, so fucking cynical, you know? And I was just like, fucking tone it down. I didn't say that, but I was thinking it in my head. And then I also immediately thought, wow, I'm a terrible person. I'm an asshole. Because this person is coming at me with so much love and light. And they just want everyone to feel good. They want everything to be okay. Sunshine and rainbows. And I must be a terrible person because it's rubbing me the wrong way. So that must mean that I am rotten to the core. I really internalized that I'm a terrible person because this love and light and joy and good vibes that are coming towards me just doesn't feel authentic and it's not landing well. So there must be something wrong with me. Being consumed sleep as a child is a little weird. There's so much self-awareness, but you don't know what to do with it. It's like a bad trip to be that self-aware, but really just not know what to do with it. As far back as I can remember, just meta. Just Annie watching Annie. Annie really, really aware of what little Annie is doing. What do you do with that when you're four years old or five years old? It's just weird to be that self-aware, observing yourself and have so much self-awareness, but you just have no idea what to make of it. And other children around me didn't seem to be having the same experience. Maybe some of them were having a similar experience, but it, it's like hard to see. I think it's a little bit more rare. And then we have these public masks. I think even when you're four and five years old, you learn to put on a public mask when you're communicating with the tribe. So being really self-aware, there were certain things I knew about myself, even if I didn't have the terminology to to describe it. So I knew I was weird. I knew that I was DI. And I concluded that I was just sort of an asshole. Just not a good person. So FE and extroversion in general is so highly prized in our society. Winners are extroverted. Winners are upbeat. Winners are responsible for the vibe. So FE is a really good skill. It can take you places. But there's just something about it that for me just doesn't land right and can and sometimes feel slightly inauthentic. And I think, again, when I use the word traumatizing, it's really just that I internalized it and created these limiting beliefs that don't necessarily need to be there. They're just limiting beliefs that I created a long time ago and have sort of stuck with me and are present sometimes when I'm in situations where there's a lot of FE coming at me hard and fast. So this has been coming up for me a bit recently. I'm doing 
doing this coach training program, you know, that inherently involves a whole bunch of other people. So I'm interacting with the tribe and it's a situation where I'm learning and being taught by a collective of coaches who have a lot of experience. And a lot of them are using these FE tactics and extroverted tactics, you know, high energy, feel good tactics to communicate with the tribe. Every Tuesday, there's a live webinar that I am attending. It's a 90 minute webinar and it's just covering coaching principles and coaching techniques, coaching tools that are useful in powerful coaching. And the content itself that I'm learning in the webinars is, is really excellent, but the delivery is a little bit triggering for me. <laughs> just because of the attention to the vibe, to this effy, feel good, joy, winner kind of bullshit <laughs> that I just find a little bit triggering. So I do appreciate that this works for some people and that also when you're a moderator speaking to over 100 people, then you have to find some kind of middle ground. So if you're all just like info, which is what I like, info dominant, I really just think that the information stands on its own. It's it's fascinating. I don't need the bells and whistles. I don't need the air horn and the yay, let's go. The information itself is very, very interesting to me. But in these live webinars, there's just like a lot of FE, a lot of extroversion, a lot of like, let's go team kind of cheesy stuff that just seems like a waste of time and like doesn't really add anything to the experience for me. And so it's just triggering these feelings that like, wow, I'm a a shitty person <laughs> because these moderators are just trying to have a good time and make it a good experience for everyone. So there are a lot of different moderators. They probably aren't all extroverted. They probably aren't all lead FE, but somehow they have been indoctrinated to believe that these FE go team tactics are the best way to communicate this information. They've probably been provided a format that tells them that, you know, you should encourage the vibe in this specific way that it's the best way to keep the energy up throughout the 90 minute webinar. Yeah, probably they're not all extroverted. They're probably not all FE leads. <laughs> maybe, or or maybe they are. Maybe they, they only, you know, because we, people who don't know cognitive functions, we're still on some level aware of this is an FE person I'm talking to. This is a lead TI. We know this. We know this on an animal level, who we're dealing with and who we're talking to. So it could be that they only, you know, hire really extroverted leaders for this position. I don't know. And that would all just be like subconscious decisions that they're making, probably. So in the beginning of each webinar, they will go out of their way to mention how super excited they are to be here. I'm so happy to be here with you. And it just lands wrong. It's like fake for me. I have a hard time buying it. And maybe that's just me. Oh God, you know, maybe I am a piece of shit. I don't know. Maybe I am a complete fucking asshole. I don't know. That's how I feel when I'm dealing with this kind of energy. Energy, it really makes me feel like a piece of shit because I have these judgmental thoughts about it. And they always start off each webinar saying something like, tell me where you're all from, drop it in the comments, you know, and they'll get like, you know, I'm from Uzbekistan, I'm from Dubai, I'm from Italy. And like, you know, it's just like trivial banter. I, it just does nothing for me. I'm sorry, I'm here for the information. I love information. I'm so curious. I want to be here. I want want to learn this. I'm not here for the trivial banter. I'm not here for the vibe. And then, you know, they'll waste some more time. Like, okay, everyone drop it in the chat box. What is your favorite food? Tell us, tell us what is your favorite food? I mean, come the fuck on. Seriously? I can't get excited about this. I feel so, so cynical about this. So then we get into the meat of the information and you know, that's good. It's um, usually pretty straightforward forward, easy to understand, easy to consume. I don't have a lot of questions about it. They'll, you know, ask questions just to make sure that everyone is following along with the information. Who can tell me the number one thing you can do when you're presented with a client who has really negative energy around an issue? Drop it in the chat. The answers start coming in in the chat. Ding, ding, ding. 
Ronnie from Omaha, you are 100% correct. Acknowledge and validate. That is the number one important thing that you can do when you are presented with a client who has negative energy around an issue. You guys are awesome. Oh, I'm seeing so many correct answers in the chat. You guys are amazing. <sighs> it's so hard. It's... Uh, I'm sorry. It feels so fake. Maybe I am just an asshole. I don't know. I mean, we're we're not in kindergarten. It just feels condescending and weird. And like, we're all adults here. I am 45 fucking years old. Please don't talk to me like that. But at the same time, I didn't like being spoken to that way when I was four. So I guess it's just me. And when it comes to like FE and FI or, you know, lead FE or a lead thinking function, I think that, you know, we're just speaking it different languages. We're just sort of like communicating past each other. And for me, when I'm being coached that way, it absolutely doesn't work. So here's kind of what this would sound like. So recently I had an issue where I was avoiding an SI thing. You know, I have SI fourth. So I was avoiding renewing my driver's license. I put it off for a long time. I was avoiding it because paperwork is draining. Bureaucracy is scary. It drains the fucking life out of me. But I finally did it. And so here's a coaching scenario. The coach would say something like, so what major wins have you had in this last couple of weeks since we since we last spoke? And I would say like, you know, I was really avoiding uh, renewing my driver's license and I finally did it and it wasn't that bad. And then the coach might say something like, congratulations, that's so amazing. Good for you. Good for you for taking that step. Congratulations. The congratulations specifically, don't fucking congratulate me for doing what I should have done. Are you gonna fucking throw glitter in my face next? It's just too much. Calm the F-E down, would you? Just say well done and let's continue. Anyway, I just know that that's not how I like to be coached. It's not helpful. It feels inauthentic. It just doesn't land the right way. And I think for myself, when I'm coaching, I have F-I. And so what I'm feeling internally when I'm coaching someone, when they're telling me about an issue, and it could be something Thing that I have no experience with, but they're just describing to me their life and their issue, I can feel it. People really associate FE with empathy. I guess I, I kind of get that, but here's what FI looks like for me when I'm coaching. I am feeling with you. I'm there with you. I, I'm listening deeply, and it's like I have these guitar strings inside of me, and you're telling me your story and your life and your experience, and those strings are vibrating at the same frequency as what you're telling me, the story you're telling me, the feelings that you're having. I'm feeling it with you. I'm there and I'm listening, but I'm not taking it on. It's not mine. And so I think maybe that's something that is associated with empaths is that not only do they feel what other people feel, but they also like take it on. I'm not taking it on. I'm just there with you. I can vibrate at that same frequency. The main thing is that I'm very, very present and I'm listening and acknowledging Acknowledging and validating is a powerful tool. And so your experience, whatever it is, is valid. And it makes sense. Given your experiences in your entire life up to this point and all of your beliefs, it makes sense that you would feel the way that you feel right now. And it's normal. And it's within the normal range of human experience. And a lot of people feel that way. And I can sort of feel it too, even if I've never actually experienced it. Whatever feeling frequency is vibrating within you, I can feel it too. But I'm not necessarily going to take it on. I know that it's not mine. I can acknowledge, I can validate, and I can feel proud of a client who has overcome some obstacle. I can feel proud and I can say, hey, way to go. That's great. But I am not going to jump up and down and blow sparks out my ass. I'm not going to throw confetti in your face. And I really would appreciate it if nobody did that to me. And I think that's just a difference in type, a difference in communication and that some people might do really well with coaches who are very extroverted or lead FE. They might do better with that. So yeah, triggered. Uh, limiting beliefs. Uh, judgments. Yeah, I've got a lot of that. And I think a lot of us do. We don't always admit to that because you're not supposed to say like kind of a, a judgmental piece of shit, you know. Um, and I'm not a piece of shit and you're not a piece of shit either. But you know, people have judgments. They just do. And that's one of mine. Yeah, I'm allergic to FE. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking about out on a Tuesday in early November.